What's going on, guys? Welcome back to We Want Picks. My name is Jacob, aka the Freckled Salamander, here to bring you my quick pick video for UFC Vegas 80. But before we get into this video, make sure you go to WeWantPicks.com. It's a beautiful website, and there you will find an opportunity to become a premium member for only ten dollars a month. Not ten dollars a card. Not ten dollars a week. It is ten dollars a month, the best value in the industry. So make sure you go ahead and check it out. But let's get right into the action. Quick pick video. For UFC Vegas 80. First up, we got Montana De La Rosa versus J.J. Aldrich. And this one is going to be a close one. I'm leaning towards Montana in this matchup. And a lot of it has to become the short notice for J.J. I think J.J. is the better striker in this matchup. She can probably hold her own in the grappling. But in short notice, Montana is a girl that is probably one of the most talented girls I've ever seen with a 12-8 and 8 record. Has lost to mostly really, really top-level competition. And in this matchup, I think that she can just kind of wear down J.J. JJ, if she can control the distance, control the striking, she can win this matchup. But if it starts turning into a dogfight, like Montana, I keep wanting to say Montana, like Montana made it against Macy Barber, I think that Montana can can definitely dogfight her way to a victory in this matchup. Maybe not get the takedowns in the first round. A little hit or miss there, but in the second round, start taking over, get the takedown, get the grappling, get the control, and start winning this fight. So I am going Montana in this matchup. I understand that JJ has grappling in her own. She's probably the better striker in this match, but short notice is a big concern against somebody that can be so persistent like Montana De La Rosa. Montana, hey, you're my girl this matchup, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, hit me up, you know, on the Instagram, my Instagram. Nate Maness versus Mateus, and this one's going to be very interesting. I, I do not, I'll be honest with you, I don't understand the odds at all. I understand Mateus is a shoot-the-box guy. He's a very aggressive guy. He's a wild guy. But from what I've seen so far, he's kind of a first round or bust type of guy in that last matchup. Came in, did all the wild stuff with really no effect in his last matchup. I know it was a high level competition and then really started fading. And Nate is a guy at 125. It's going to have crazy, crazy length. Uses that length pretty well with his striking. What I do worry about is he, he he can get chinned. He can get hurt. And Mateus is a guy that can get in your face. And if he lands, he's going to hurt you. If he gets you on the ground, he can't out grab you. Nate can get taken down as well. So this is one of those situations where if you're going to play it, you might as well play Mateus first round in my mind. I, I wouldn't play the minus 200, minus 250, whatever it is. Let's get specific with it. Because after the first round, this is going to be a close back and forth fight. And I think that Nate, being the cleaner striker, can really kind of start beating up Mateus in the second, in the third round of this fight if it gets there. I do worry if it does get there. So my pick for this fight, it's going to be a little bit asterisk, right? I I'm going with Nate. But I'm going to be very worried those first three, four minutes of this match, especially if he gets taken down because Mateus is going to be very, very good in the grappling. So I'm going Nate here, but I'm just hoping that it gets out of the first round. If it gets out of the first round, I feel a lot better about it. If you're going to play if you're going to play dogs here, I mean, Nate, I think, is not the one to play just because the first round's a little bit dangerous. But... It might be a live bet situation. We'll see how it plays out. But Nate is my pick for this matchup. Murata versus Vanessa. And this one, I, I... This one's got me fucked though. I mean, this one, I don't understand the odds of this one. Listen, I know that Murata's a wrestler. And she should be able to get the takedowns. And she should be able to control somebody like Vanessa. But Vanessa is a girl that wants to be on her ground. She doesn't mind to be on her back. She will play that game. And I've seen Murata in those situations it's against Verna. She got her arm snapped. Now, Murata, by the way, Jack Jenkins, take some notes on how you deal with a broken arm. Murata fought an entire round with a broken arm. So Jack Jenkins, maybe toughen up a little bit. But Murata is a girl that has found herself in some trouble on the ground, even in top position. Vanessa is a girl... That I know she's not the the, the best striker, but Morata is not a good striker. I think the the striking in this matchup is 50-50, and Vanessa is probably going to be the one moving forward. The issue is is Morata Morata can she keep control and stay out of danger for 15 minutes? And I'll be honest with you, with the long layoff, with as tenacious and resilient as Vanessa is, I don't think she can. I, 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 I'm going to have a lot of dogs on this card. There's going to be a lot of asterisks with these dogs. If I'm playing the Vanessa side, she is going to be like my pick. But if I'm playing her, and I, what I think the be, one of the better values on this card is going to be is going to be Vanessa inside the distance, decision no action. Because Murata, 
could just lay on her for 15 minutes. I don't think she's a, she's a, a threat to finish. Vanessa's very tough. But Vanessa's going to be very, very live on the ground. That's where she wants to be. That's where Murata is going to take this fight. So I'm picking Vanessa, but a little bit. Again, like kind of the Nate, the last fight. A little bit of an asterisk here. Don't just tail random, you know. Let's get a little bit more specific. Inside the distance, this is no action. Something like that. But Vanessa, I mean, there's a 50-55 on the, on the feet. And I think she's the more dangerous person on the ground. She could get out wrestled for 15 minutes, but... We'll see how it plays out, Vanessa. Eh? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, my Instagram, JT underscore lines, you know. Munoz Juno versus Arichi Long. And I'm pretty sure it's Arichi Long. I think I used to call him Ari Ki Lang or whatever. I'm pretty sure it's Arichi Long. Listen, Johnny Munoz Jr., I've, I've been back and forth on this guy. He was a former lock of the week, got knocked out with one punch. Then I went completely against him. In this matchup, it's going to be very interesting. We learned, and what I've been trying to tell you guys about Johnny Munoz Jr., who he is, a jiu-jitsu nerd. He is a jiu-jitsu nerd. You're going to see him in the striking. It looks like he knows what he's doing. But when he backs up in the striking, I mean, it's just chin straight up in the air. And he can get knocked out, especially against a guy like Arichi Long. But his takedowns aren't as bad as they seem from his last fight. If he really goes all in on the takedowns, he can probably get Arichi Long to the ground. If he can't get the takedowns we've seen, he's comfortable pulling guard. That's why I say the jiu-jitsu nerd, he will pull guard. And on the ground, he's very dangerous. I mean, very, very dangerous. He couldn't catch Willy Cat in anything, but on the ground, even off his back, he probably can catch Arichi Long in something. The issue is... I just can't, I don't, I don't, I cannot put my money and I cannot put my picks on a jiu-jitsu nerd. Somebody that is pulling guards so early in fights drives me insane. And I've seen him get knocked out before. Arichi Long has decent takedown defense. He's got to know what's coming in this matchup. And all it really takes in my mind is going to be one shot from Arichi Long to end this fight. So again, Here's another dog play. I know it's kind of a pick and fight, but it's a Richie Long. If you're going to play Johnny Munoz Jr., you might as well just play him by sub. You know, instead of the, the minus 105, whatever, you're going to get sub plus 150, plus 200, something like that. You might as well just play him like that. That's probably how he's going to win the fight. But I'm taking a Richie Long here. I think he can find the shot, defend the first takedowns, and I hope that he doesn't play the game at all on the ground. But if he does and Johnny gets the sub, I would not be surprised at all. So this is another one where it's like I'm making a pick here, but it's like... I can see both sides of it. Richie Long is like my official pick, but, you know, Johnny's def definitely going to be live if this goes to the ground. So, let's move on to the next. Chris Gutierrez versus Montel Jackson. And this is another one where I've been back and forth. Montel Jackson is the better overall fighter, right? He's got the wrestling. He's got long, rangy striking with sneaky, sneaky power. It's, it's kind of weird how he throws that power because he doesn't look overly fast. But when he lands, it's like, oh, yeah, he definitely has power. And Chris Gutierrez, I know a lot of people are down on him because of his last fight with Pedro Munoz. But that fight was a fight where he never really got comfortable. You, you hear about fighters all the time talk about getting in the flow state and fighters in the flow state. Chris Gutierrez, because of Pedro Munoz, is all these feints and all his pressure, the striking pressure, never really got in that flow state. In this fight, I think he's going to be able to get in a flow state. Right? I think he's going to be a lot more comfortable striking against Montel because Montel's a guy that will sit back. He will wait. A lot of times, if you're betting on Montel, you're you're in a situation where like, dude, I just wish he kind of did a little bit more. I wish he did a little bit more. He just never goes all in, even in takedowns, even in the striking. He never seemed really go all in. It seems like he just doesn't have that next gear. The issue is he does have that wrestling, and that's why he's going to be my pick for this fight. I think that he's going to... You know, get a little bit tentative in the striking. Chris is going to get in that flow state in the striking. But boom, those takedowns will be there to steal rounds and steal this fight. I think Chris is going to look much better than the Pedro Munoz fight. But he's going to be looking good and almost too good, right? Because once he starts finding that flow state, Montel can go to the wrestling as a high-level wrestler and just kind of nullify everything in that fight. So my pick... I almost did go Chris Gutierrez, I'll be honest with you. He's going to look better in my mind. But because of the wrestling, overall fighting style, I believe that Montel's the better fighter. That's why the odds are the way they are. But this is probably going to be a very, very close fight. And if Montel does not wrestle, he definitely can lose his fight. So Montel is my official pick. But I hope that he wrestles. One takedown around is all it takes. Two minutes left. 130 in the round. Get a takedown. Get that control. Win the round. Move on. Let's get out of here. Chris, a dangerous guy. Let's move on to the next. Carolina versus Deanna. I'm not picking against Deanna. Come on, no. <laughs> guys. I mean, look. Come on, man. I'm not picking against Deanna Belbita. I will say that this is probably going to be a, a back and forth matchup. I am officially done. 
picking women favorites in a decision fight, if that, I think that made sense. If it's a decision fight, if I think that's good, and this is probably a decision fight, and, and, and there is a, a high favorite, minus 150 mile, I am not picking or laying money on females like that anymore. I will take the dog value, or at least the dog pick. What I will say here, I believe in this fight, just from watching film, there's going to be more wrestling and more grappling than people expect. People probably expect this to be kind of a back-and-forth, 15-minute striking. Deanna throwing that little wild overhand right as she ducks her head. Carolina is probably the more technical, better striker, but Deanna's tough, man. But I'm thinking that there's going to be more grappling here, and people forget that Deanna's pretty dangerous off her back. So my play here... I'm picking Deanna for, you know, for obvious reasons. Nothing against Carolina, but, I mean, she's like 38, 39 now. We got Deanna coming up 27, 28. You know, Deanna, hey. <laughs> but I'm saying right now, my, my wild play for the week. Last week, I had Charles Jordan by sub. That was my wild play. I won $1,000 off that play. Deanna by sub, for some reason, feels like an interesting play for me. I think Carolina maybe just kind of slow down the pace of Deanna clinch positions we've seen Deanna get taken down before she thinks that's the path to victory Deanna pulls off something random I'm arm bar triangle something like that that's my random play honestly if you're picking this as a 50 50 fight Carolina is the better striker so you probably do want to go Carolina in this matchup but I mean it's Deanna Bell beating me it's the and, I, and I'm telling you right now if she last time she fought she sold her fight worn sports bra for like $500 I could have bought I was one of the first people that my car was I'm ready to go now she sells it again that thing's gonna be hanging up behind me Deanna Belbita is my play my pick my love by the way Deanna my Instagram uh JT on Bill Algeo versus Alexander the Great Hernandez and this one is like I don't understand why Alexander is going to 145 once again I mean we saw him go to 145 he's just not he's not really a, I don't want to say he's not a durable guy to begin with. He's he's okay durability-wise. But at 145, you've seen he's not really a durable guy. And when you are not a durable guy coming down in weight and you're fighting a guy like Bill Algeo who is like Mr. Durability, that just seems like a cause for concern for a guy like Alexander. Because Alexander is a guy that after the first round, you just see him just start stair-stepping down. Now, against Jim Miller, he did okay. He kind of hung tough, but that was at 155 against a 40-year-old Jim Miller. Alexander's got to come in. He's got to set the tone early, and he's got to get, in my mind, he's got to get Bell Algea out there in the first round. Either that, or he's got to play very, very smart. He's got to almost point fight Bill Algeo because Bill Algeo is a guy that is very hittable. He can get beat up, but the second you start fading, he will recognize that and he will jump on top of you. So Alex needs to do two things. Go all in, try to get Bill Algeo out there because he can get beat up, he can get hurt, and maybe this is the one time you can finally get Bill Algeo out in the first round. Or he's got to just say, hey, listen, this is going to go 15 minutes. I got to take my time and just point fight. Almost the way that he was fighting Jim Miller. Because Bill Algeo will get beat up. He will get bust up. And if you just point fight him for 15 minutes and you don't try to chase a finish, you can win that fight. But Alexander seems like a guy, from what I've seen in the past, that he will point fight, point fight, point fight. Let's say three or four minutes in the first round. Think he has Bill Algeo hurt. And then he's going to rush in, go for the finish. Blow his load. Bill's going to do what he does. Weather the storm. Smile at you. And then knock you down and maybe submit you. So my pick here, long story short, is going to be Bill Algeo. Because he is the perfect. Until I see him not fold to the pressure. I'm going to believe that he can weather the early Alexander Hernandez. Alexander coming down 145. Isn't going to have the same, same stamina at 155. He's going to weather the storm. Maybe drop the first round. But then take over and really start beating up Alexander in the second and the third round. So close fight. We'll see what happens in the first round. Could be interesting, but I like the durability of Bill Algeo in this matchup. Let's move on. Felipe Linz versus Jan Kutalaba. And Jan Kutalaba is almost like the Andre Fialo of whatever, of, of, of 205. I mean, at this point, the guy was just getting knocked out left and right. I know he came in his last fight, finally got the win, but I don't know how anybody can trust him. I don't know how anybody can trust him or how he can be a favorite against anybody, especially against a guy like Felipe Lins. Felipe Lins is a guy that at 205 has looked fantastic, and he can weather storms. He knows how to slow the fight down to a pace. But if it turns into a, bra a, a brawl against the fence, 
Felipe Lanz is a guy that will bite down and has good speed and decent hands against the fence. And if he lands on Kutalaba, he's going to knock him out. But if Kutalaba comes in with his wrestling background and thinks, I'm just going to take this guy down, Felipe Lanz, former heavyweight, is a big, strong guy, would take down the fence, can reverse those positions, and is a black belt on the ground, can really find Kutalaba in some trouble because Kutalaba is too... He is... Mr. Doc, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? He on the if he if Kutalab is controlling the fight, he's on top. He looks, I mean, he looks unstoppable. He's got the ground and pound. He looks nasty. The second he goes to the bottom, or the second somebody's on his back, he completely turns into a different person. I think Felipe Linz does that in this fight. Kutalaba is going to come forward, maybe get clipped a little bit, go to the wrestling. Felipe is going to be strong, reverse him against the fence, get a takedown, and really, really hurt this guy, either in the striking or in a submission. So I am going with the upset here. Felipe Linz, I just don't know how anybody can, can trust the chin of Kutalaba, and not even the chin, even the wrestling and the grappling. Felipe Linz, obviously he's a little bit older, but he's looked fantastic, 205. I'm going Felipe Linz in this matchup. Let's move. Drew Dober and Ricky Glenn. I told you guys about Drew Dober last time. I said that chin ain't going to hold up forever. Matt Fravola was my lock of the week against Drew Dober. I got trashed that entire week. Oh, my God. Drew Dober is going to knock out and finish Matt Fravola in this matchup. I think the same. I, I'm not going to say the same thing is going to happen. But I'm, I'm, from the for the rest of my life, I will tell you guys, be careful with Drew Dober because he does get Hit. I mean, he just, he does get hit. The difference in this fight is I am going to pick Drew Dober. I think that the odds should probably be more like a minus 200, minus 400, minus 450 for a guy that gets hit that much is a little bit crazy to me, especially because he does get dropped constantly. Got knocked out in his last fight. He's going to say it's an early stoppage or whatever, but he was pretty hurt by Favola. The difference is Favola has really, really nice speed. I don't think that Ricky Glenn has the speed of a Matt Favola which makes this a, a lot different in this matchup. Also, Ricky Glenn got put on his face in his last fight as well. So I understand the odds and the love for Drew Dober against a guy like Ricky Glenn, who had a long layoff, came back, beat some okay guys, got knocked out. Um, so I am going to go Drew Dober. He should be the better striker in what should be a mostly striking matchup, and that's pretty much as simple as this in. It's just you know, minus 400, minus 450 for a guy that gets hit as much as him, that gets stumbled as much as him, that gets frozen as much as him, that just got knocked as well. A little bit of a red flag there, but Drew Dober is my... Morano versus Joaquin Buckley. I'm a big Buckley fan, man. After that last fight versus Fialo, he got on the mic. You know, get bumped, baby. I, I fucking love Buckley. But I will say in this matchup, I think he's in a little bit of trouble, man, because Buckley is a guy that... He isn't the most technical striker, isn't the most technical wrestler. Everything he does is with athleticism, it's with explosion, it's with power. And Alex Morono is almost the, 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 the perfect yin to that yang, the way that he fights. Now, he if you guys have never seen Alex Morono fight, when you watch him, when that fight starts versus Buckley, you're going to be like, oh my God, this guy's going to get knocked out. And he very well could get knocked out. Buckley could come in, find the power shot, snipe him, and put this guy out. That is very, that is very possible in the realm of possibilities that's why he's a favorite in this matchup but Alex Morona with that high guard the tippy toe style he is very good at waiting waiting and the power that he has in the pocket in those short shots when people try to get wild on him is is really really going to be detrimental to Joaquin Buckley in this matchup I watched that fight for Simmelsberger and Buckley and Simmelsberger aren't exactly the same, but Simmelsberger is another guy that strikes with explosion, right? Boom, he's coming in fast, he's coming in hard, he's coming in heavy. And Morona was very, very good at not only working the jab and was beating up the eye, but when he would blitz in, Morona would beat him to the spot. Morono is a guy, if you guys don't know about Alex Morono, he, he's a very experienced guy, underrated power. Very, 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 very high-level grappler. Like, very high-level grappler. But he's not a jujitsu nerd. He has said, yeah, I've got this grappling. I don't like using it. I think it's kind of boring. So he likes to strike. The reason I bring that up is Buckley is a guy that if he starts losing the striking exchanges or to kind of steal rounds, he will go to those wrestling blast doubles, those big explosive 
takedowns. That is really bad news against a very high level grappler because in the explosion, you're not technical, you're losing positions, you're falling over the top of people. And if Alex Morono decides for whatever reason in this matchup, hey, I think I'm going to start using my grappling, he is 10 times the grappler that Joaquin Buckley is in this matchup. So long story short, I believe that Alex Morono is the more technical striker, the better striker in this matchup, and also is the better grappler. I understand that Buckley is going to be live for the knockout. He's got the crazy power. He's explosive. He's strong. He's a tough guy. He's fun. I like Buckley. But I think Morono is a better striker, has power, can eat a shot okay. I know that he got knocked out by Ponzinibbio, but that was on a five days notice, and he was beating the shit out of Ponzinibbio. He was beating the shit out of Simmelsberger as well. Um... I'm going Alex Morono here in the upside. I think he's the better striker. I think he can handle his own on the ground. If it goes to the ground, I think Buckley's really in trouble. And that's how I see it. I just, I'm going to take who I believe is the better the better fighter in this matchup. I believe it's Alex Morono. And we'll see if he can not get knocked out by Buckley. But that's as simple as this is. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Joe Pfeiffer versus Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. And whoo boy, what, minus 400? Minus 450? Minus 500? This ballooned up to, I think, minus 575 at one point. Good luck. You know, I I, I am going to take Joe Pfeiffer here, but I need to see something else. <laughs> I need to see something else against better competition than the last two people he's fought and knocked out before I start laying minus 400 money against the guy like Abdul Razak Halasan because that guy will put your lights out. And if you watch Joe Pfeiffer fight and you really dig into his fights, I watch a few of his fights, he gets hit. He leaves himself exposed. The thing that I see happening here, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Joe Pfeiffer is going to be my pick, right? He's the He should be the better overall fighter. Even if he needs to go to the grappling, the, the, the wrestling, he should be better there. Abdul's got some judo, but other than that, Joe should be better. What I worry about for Joe Pfeiffer is almost the, um, the Alex Pajeda versus Izzy 2 fight where Alex was really having some success, really having some success, got Izzy against the fence, and really dropped his hands. Because I've seen that from Joe time and time again. He gets, he's patient, he's patient, he's patient. He realizes, I've got somebody against the fence, I want to put him out, and he starts dropping his hands to lay combinations. And against a guy like Abdul, you don't want to do that. So, long story short, Joe is going to be my pick. But I need to see a little bit more. I need to see I need to see him eat a couple shots, go through a little bit of adversity in some fights before I start putting him in parlays at minus 400, money lines at minus 400. I know a lot of people are going to be chasing inside the distance. Uh, I just need to see a little bit more from Joe Pfeiffer. But he is going to be my pick. We'll see what happens. Let's move on to the main event. Main event time. Grant Dawson versus Bobby King Green. Let me start off by saying I'm a huge Bobby Green fan. If you guys have listened to me break down Bobby Green fights, I think I've picked him for every single fight he has ever picked. Even against Islam. When he came in short notice against Islam, I sat here and I was telling everyone, listen, Bobby Green's a wrestler. He knows how to wrestle. He, he, he is going to be the better striker. I would not be surprised if he gave Islam a lot of trouble in that fight and maybe even snuck out a win in that fight. And I truly believe that because Bobby does have a wrestling base. He was a high school wrestler. He's a, he's a good wrestler. The issue is Grant Dawson, and I'm a kind of a Grant Dawson hater too. I said that Damir Ismagulov was going to come in and smoke Grant Dawson. The second I saw Grant Dawson get a high-level mixed martial artist like Demir Ismagulov and a fucking full Nelson in the third round of that fight. I said, I am never picking against this guy. <laughs> I'm never picking. He got a, a high level. This is the top level. Demir Ismagulov has the talent to be a champion. Obviously, he's not going to be anymore. It's a very high level. He's in a fucking full Nelson, guys. In the third round of that fight, Grant Dawson is so relentless with his grappling, with his wrestling. Even when he gets tired, and even if he gets on bottom to pull guard, he will he will get in those deep half positions and find sweeps to win positions to win this fight. I love Bobby Green. I think that he definitely probably can make this a back and forth fight. He's got to extend this fight for as long as he can and hope that Grant Dawson gets tired in the fourth and fifth rounds. And maybe that happens. But to bet on somebody to get tired 
is a very, very dangerous bet, especially when that person who gets tired or could get tired isn't a fucking quitter. And Grant Dawson, to his credit, even if he gets tired, will just keep on pushing forward. And Bobby Green is not really a guy with power, which is the biggest issue here. If he was a guy that had the one-punch power that could really hurt Grant Dawson, we've seen Grant Dawson get hit, kind of get chinned a little bit before, I would feel better about it. Bobby Green is probably just going to be defending takedowns, going to get taken down, and unfortunately, Bobby Green off his back or somebody on his back is not the same type of Bobby Green as somebody that's using the Philly shell and the striking or is in top position against a guy like Tony Ferguson. So... I understand the odds. I would love nothing more if Bobby Green came in and exposed Grant Dawson because he dry, Grant Dawson kind of drives me insane. But Grant Dawson is just so fucking resilient with those takedowns, man. I mean, he's 21 for a reason. He is just non-stop. I think that he has an opportunity to end this fight early. He's going to be trying to chase a finish, in my mind, to make a statement main event against a guy like Bobby Green. And I think he might be able to get it done. It could be a submission. Grant Dawson, second, third round submission, something like that. I am going Grant Dawson. Back of my mind, I probably will be rooting for Bobby King Green. I love that dude. I love everything that he's about. Super cool dude. But for the pick, I got to go with Grant Dawson. Thank you guys so much for watching this quick pick video from me, your boy, Jacob, a.k.a. The Freckled Salad Man. Make sure you like the video, by the way. Subscribe if you are new. Become a premium member. It's only $10 a month. I will be live for the Contender Series this Tuesday, so make sure you check it out. I don't think I'm going to be live next weekend, so you better watch me then. Appreciate you guys. I'm out.